started. Okay, so uh, last day we looked at um, chemical reactions, what they were. We discussed, you know, reactants, products, and uh, balancing equations. Okay, so who here had some practice with balancing equations since our last tutorial? Me a check mark or something. Okay, we practiced balancing some equations. And a couple. Okay, now you probably want to, you know, get some practice with that um, just to consolidate it. You know, we talked about it, we went through some examples, and of course, you can go back and watch the tutorial or download the tutorial video from the blog and, and go over that again to refresh your memory. Uh, but you really need to practice it to, to get good at it. Okay, but now we're going to continue on past that um, and talk about types of reactions. Okay, now there's seven different groups that we can put reactions into, and these are groups that you should... Um, you know, come to understand what they are by name. Okay. Now, the ones that we are particularly dealing with in, in Science 10 are combustion um, reactions. We'll talk about those. We will talk about neutralization reactions. Um, we are going to talk about decomposition reactions, precipitation reactions. Not going to get into oxidation reactions that much. Now, displacement, they have here displacement. We use a slightly different term. So I'm going to write those down. Single replacement or displacement and double replacement. Those are the terms that uh, are going to be in your textbook and that you're going to be more um, familiar with. Now, decomposition, that's in your book. Thermal uh, is kind of a, a specific type, so we'll just stick with decomposition. And there's one here that's missing that we're going to be talking about. That is synthesis. Synth synthesis reactions. Okay. Um, now, when a reaction takes place, things happen. Now, some evidences that reactions have occurred um, would be things like gas is being given off, uh, there's a change in color, perhaps the solid material or precipitate is, is appearing. Uh, temperature change would be an example and some of those we already discussed last day but I want to remind you of these things as well. Uh, and we also want to remember that in chemical reactions the mass of the reactants, the chemicals we start with, is always the same as the mass of the products, the, those ones that we end up with. Okay, now let's take a look at a combustion reaction to begin with. Uh, this is a name we give to reactions when things burn in air. Now air is actually made out of you know different gases, not just oxygen, but it's actually oxygen that we're mostly concerned with in a combustion reaction. Um, it is a type of oxidation reaction. Oxygen is involved, but we won't discuss really, you know, about re oxidation reactions um, to a large extent. Uh, not the detail that you'd get to in, in Chem 20, anyways. But we'll just say oxidation reactions are a reaction that involve uh, electron transfer and oxygen. Um, now, combustion reactions generally happen quickly. They're a fairly fast reaction. A flame is produced and it heats the surroundings. So, here we have, um, down below, an example. Methane plus oxygen produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Now, methane is a type of molecule that's made out of carbon and, let's see, hydrogen. 
Okay, now who is clever and can tell me the name of a group of, of compounds that are made out of hydrogen and carbon? Anybody want to put up their hand for that one? When I tell you, you're going to think it, it's too easy. No hands up? It's made out of hydrogen and carbon. It's called a hydrocarbon. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Okay, so hydrocarbon of some sort. Now this is a small one, methane. Now you can have a bigger one like gasoline is a hydrocarbon. All right, that's a, a type of benzene that's got six carbon molecules. Um, butane, propane, all of those are different types of, of hydrocarbon. Uh, now they're going to react with oxygen gas. Oh, let's go here. Oxygen gas to produce a certain products, okay? So the products are always the same in a combustion reaction. And those products are carbon dioxide gas plus water. Now the water is typically water vapor. Okay, so we'll put it in the gaseous state. But that is the format for a combustion reaction. Now there's only one part of this reaction that will change and that is the hydrocarbon. You'll have different hydrocarbons. You might have methane, you might have propane, you might have butane, you might have uh, pentane, all sorts of different hydrocarbons which are possible. Okay, now those hydrocarbons um, are all going to be in a combustion reaction. Okay, so you have hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water. <clears throat> so any questions about what a combustion reaction is? Give me a check mark if you've got it. Okay. Everyone except for Rhea who ran away. Run, run, run away. Okay. Now Oxidation reaction, as we said, is basically when oxygen is involved in a reaction to make an oxide. Um, you can go into more detail about electron exchange, but that's good enough for us. Decomposition. Now, decomposition in general, now it talks about thermal, but I'm going to talk about decomposition in general. I start with a more, mm, what do you call it? complicated reactant and produce less complicated products. Okay, so one way to, to describe this in a generic sense would be, let's say I have compound AB and it goes to produce compound A plus, well let's say element A plus element B, that would probably work. Okay, so <clears throat> that's a decomposition reaction. Now thermal decomposition just means that heat is used for the decomposition to occur, but um, that's not always the case. You can have decompositions that are uh, facilitated by enzymes, that are facilitated by electricity sometimes, that are facilitated by other things. They generally do require some type of, of input of energy to occur in most cases. Okay. <clears throat> So any questions about what a decomposition reaction is? Check marks if you get it. Super. Rhea, you are here now. I'm assuming so. She seems to be texting someone. All right. All righty. Now, displacement. Uh, displacement, or let's call it a replacement, single or double replacement reaction, um, is when one metal, here it says one metal, kicks out a less reactive one. So if I have iron, okay, iron plus copper sulfate, will go to copper and iron sulfate. 
So you can see that iron and copper traded places. So this is also known as a single replacement reaction. Okay, now the generic form of this reaction, I could say A plus BC is going to produce B plus AC. Okay, so the metal, which is always the, you know, the one on the front, is changing places, A and B change places. Or you can say one metal trades places with the other one. And this is known as a displacement or single replacement reaction. Now a double displacement or double replacement reaction would be very similar. I would say have AB plus CD which is going to produce uh, A, D plus C, B. All right, now this is a double replacement because the metals are being replaced in both. Okay, so this one replaces this one, and this one replaces this one. And so we would refer to that as a double replacement reaction. And these are quite common, double replacement reaction, um, in different compounds. Because usually you're going to have two compounds reacting together, not just an element and a compound, though that can also happen. Uh, so a double replacement reactions can occur in a variety of situations. Now a pre precipitation reaction is basically any reaction that produces a product that is insoluble. Okay, so let's say I add two liquids together and then as soon as they're added together this solid appears. Okay, well why did the solid appear? Well, obviously some type of chemical reaction occurred and some of the you know, elements switched places and produced a new product. Now new products have different characteristics. So where I had two liquids, the new product uh, was a solid. Okay, that was not soluble in the solution and it precipitated out. Now an example of this is if we blow, uh, you know, with a straw into lime water, which is actually a calcium oxide solution. The carbon dioxide that's in our breath will join up with the calcium oxide to form calcium carbonate. Now the calcium carbonate is actually not soluble in solution and uh, will be white. So as you blow into the clear lime water, calcium oxide, uh, it will start to turn cloudy and even milky if you keep blowing for a long enough time. Okay, <clears throat> and here you can see an example of an insoluble, uh, it looks actually like underneath it could be, that actually just looks like uh, a reaction between acetic acid and uh, sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Now, so precipitation reaction, as we're talking about, can be in this form. Now, we should recognize this form. All right, we already discussed this form of reaction. Who is clever enough to tell me what the, the name of, of that form of reaction is? <clears throat> yep, it seems like we've got a couple of clever people trying to make an answer. Double replacement. That is correct. Super. Double replacement reaction. All right. So 
the double replacement reaction is a common type of reaction for precipitation. So you might have the you know thought process if if it's one type of reaction, let's say precipitation, that it can't be another kind. Well, no, it can actually be both. It can be a precipitation reaction that produces um, an insoluble product, solid, that also is a double replacement reaction. Okay. And uh, let's move on. So this is an example right here of a precipitation reaction. So I add two solutions together and I'm producing this white precipitate as they mix. Okay, so that new product that was formed forms some type of precipitate. Now, I don't want to talk about this. Hmm. No, okay. But we haven't gone through all of our reaction types. Uh, we talked about single replacement, we talked about double replacement, we talked about decomposition, oxidation, combustion. Uh, we did not yet talk about neutralization or synthesis. Okay, so let's just talk about synthesis for a second. Synthesis is when I take two very simple things, usually elements, an element, combine them to produce. A compound. That's a synthesis reaction. So an example could be, okay, let's take hydrogen plus oxygen and produce, okay, and here we'll give you an opportunity to be clever again. What's going to be produced if I add hydrogen and oxygen together? ideas no no takers that one water okay hydrogen and oxygen are going to combine to produce water um, I mean that's not a balanced equation you guys could balance it though because you now know how so that's awesome but this is a synthesis reaction okay element hydrogen's an element oxygen that's an element to produce a compound synthesis reaction okay now a neutralization reaction that is um, going to involve two different types of entities an acid Ooh, I really can't write very good on this thing can I? and a base it's better that way, isn't it? So acid and base are going to react to produce, they always produce the same kind of thing. Do, do, do. They will produce a salt and water. That's a neutralization reaction. Okay, so I'm gonna put down an example. Let's say uh, an acid, hydrochloric acid. There we go. That's a good one plus sodium hydroxide. That's a good base. Both aqueous solutions. To produce salt, sodium chloride, which actually will be aqueous in solution, plus water, which will be liquid. Okay, so that is a neutralization reaction. Now, let's see someone that's super duper clever and can tell me what other type of reaction this would be that we've discussed today. So it is a neutralization reaction, but it's also another type of reaction. Talked about today. Double replacement, exactly. John gets a prize, super clever prize of the day. Okay, because here we have hydrogen is now joining with hydroxide ion to produce 
water. And we have sodium trading places to produce sodium chloride. So that's a double replacement reaction. Okay, also a neutralization reaction because neutralization reaction is a little bit more specific but would fall under the category of double replacement. But it produces sodium chloride and water. Now where would you find sodium chloride? Who knows that? Where would you find it? In your house. It's salt, it's salt shaker. Okay, so you could find it on your French fries too. Um, that's the kind of salt we eat. Now there are different kinds of salts because a salt is basically any metal and a non-metal combined. Um, yeah, basically. Okay, so an ionic compound between a metal and a non-metal produces a salt. Now some salts are you know, edible and other salts are definitely not. Okay, so some would even be poisonous, but there are certain salts. Now you could have a different acid and a different base, but they would still produce a salt of some sort and water. So that's something we're going to remember now. All right, so we talked about synthesis reactions, we talked about single and double replacement reactions neutralization reactions, combustion reactions, precipitation reactions, and decomposition reactions. And those are the main reaction types that you are going to need to know about. Um, that being said, those are types of reactions. There are also two major categories of reactions that we haven't talked about. So I'm going to mention those today as well. I'm going to clear all this two different categories. Okay, category one, exothermic. Category two, endothermic. Now, you may have already, you know, heard these terms before. All right, so I'm going to give people an opportunity to, again, demonstrate their vast knowledge that they possess. And tell me, first of all, um, what if what would be an exothermic reaction like what's a characteristic any ideas with that a couple people seem to be giving you some answers that's good flames combustion yes that would be a good example a combustion reaction would be exothermic because exothermic reactions give off or produce Produce heat. Exactly, Alanta. Or Alanta, sorry. Okay, so now then, what do you think endothermic reactions do? If exothermic gives off, produce heat, then endothermic do what? Someone has to know this. Absorb heat, exactly. Absorb or require heat. Um, an example of that could be the chemicals in uh, like cold packs. You mix them together and then it gets cold. Well, why does it get cold? Well, that reaction actually requires heat to occur. It will absorb it from the immediate environment, okay. Um, so that's probably all I want to talk about right now as far as exothermic and endothermic. Um, later on we may go in some more detail of it. For now that's good. So we've gone through the major reaction types and we've gone through the two major reaction categories. So now you know a whole bunch about chemical reactions including hopefully how to write them and balance them. That's a big part of this unit. So if you know how to do all that 
then you're doing good. Now, if you don't know how to do all of that quite yet, then you might need to ask more questions, do some more practice. You know, you don't want to be a passive learner. If you're in a position where you don't know something, you're going to have to choose some type of action so that you do learn it. Okay. So, with that, I'm going to turn off the recording.